It's really anywhere where you see a collection of people extending one into the other, right? That's the best way to think of it. But for Plato, he, he lays it all out and goes really deep into it and eventually says, this is what a polis should look like, a political city, right? So I think I'm trying to say that a city is a place and a purpose at the same time. Hello, <laughs> welcome to, why are we talking about rabbits? That's this podcast, you know what it's for. It's aimed at people like you who are feeling a little bit, Mr. Producer, what should we say, dislocated? Like Neo, perhaps? Like Neo. Oh, God. <laughs> We're not going to read the whole thing. But it is. Heavy things done lightly. It's done here today in Naples, Florida. We're on the road getting ready to go to Guatemala, but getting a podcast in. Today, we talk about and answer the question. The eternal question is, what is a city? No one of you are thinking about that. And today, we will. What is a city? Episode 39 on Watar. Hey, welcome everybody. Mr. Producer, you are Andrew Schwartz today. There's two of you guys, plus Riley, all three of you, you do the little round table, a little round, round robin thing. Um, are you healthy today? Are you ready to go? Pretty healthy. Pretty healthy. You have a baby coming due, Mr. Producer, Andrew Schwark. I do. I do. <laughs> any, any, any moment now. <laughs> any moment, right? Yeah. So there's a possibility this podcast will not come out, come out on time or at all because you will be overwhelmed. Uh, you, this is, this. yes. I mean, yeah. Victoria could come in right now and say, I'm giving birth. And then that's why over. we have like seven producers. <laughs> 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 so Victoria, we love her. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Andrew Schwark producing from Russia. He has just recently adopted two babies from a from well they're in russia so it's a russian orphanage and guess what they just had a third well they're about to god willing man um i wanted to start with a question what you think it is give it a shot what's a city i honestly that's that's a super tough question i i think a city is a large collection of communities Nice. Communities collected together in yeah. some sort of geographic. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Something about urbanization. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe. You're coming in I'm, from the countryside. People yeah. moving for jobs. See, that's what I was getting nervous about because I didn't want to take it towards economics or anything like that. You can't I feel get like it wrong. That's no wrong strange. answer. Yeah. Yeah. Cosmopolitan yeah, I mean, place. Opportunities thriving businesses or something. Yeah. Yeah. Where everything coalesces, like congregates. Here's a definition oh. from the Webster's dictionary from the light people dictionary. Webster, of course, an enlightenment got really important thing, right? That they were working on putting all the words together in one place, all the meaning. So Webster writes, a uh, city is an inhabited place of greater size, population, or importance than a town or a village. An incorporated British town, usually of major size or importance, having the status of an Episcopal see. Ooh, they threw in uh, the bishop there. Uh, a financial district. Hmm. Cool. Webster helping us out. From the 1700s. Is that helping? Thanks, bro. Yeah, thanks, Webst. Webster, buddy. <laughs> Is that helpful to you? Yeah. It seems like now it could just be anything or yeah, most things. Would, so I didn't want to <laughs> crack on Webster, but that's broad. <laughs> An inhabited yeah. place of greater size than a town. Woo. Well, it turns out, Mr. Producer, that this is uh, something that people have thought about especially old worlders. So today we're going to get into it. And here's the good news. It's got lots of legs. We could talk about this forever, but we're not going to. We're going to get right down to it, kind of. We're not going to do deep dive, but I'm going to start with the ancient Greeks, do a little Hinduism, and talk about what this guy Ananda Kumaraswamy says who is this brilliant writer of Indian origin. He had a real 
love or sort of mojo for the ancient Christianity and Hinduism. And he was always taking apart the old world through these, uh, the leg of the spirit. Was, was he, was he the director of the Boston museum? Yes. Yep. He comes up in one of our earlier podcasts with father Silouan. That was it. Yes. He was a, that's right. He was a curator and a philosopher and, Let's put it this way. He was trying to bring beauty from the old world into the new and do it through art and a lot of philosophy. Cool. So we're going to use a lot of uh, Kuma, Kumar Swami today. And, but mostly what we're going to do is just figure out that something goes on with this notion of city that's deeply and profoundly personal. And here's what I mean. Plato and the Greeks, they spent a lot of time right, trying to define what a city is, is because they were into this notion of the polis and the polis was the place where people could become fully good. So you have to think of it as the polis, the environment you live in is going to impact you in a way that will demand your attention. And therefore it will demand your mind, your reason. And that is where you can find yourself becoming better or worse as a person. And Plato's idea was to make people act the best way they could. And the only way to do that was make sure their environment, their culture was set up to make them good. So the city is both a place where you live, but also a place that lives in you. And so he's going to start with this tripartite notion in order to help us understand. And the tripartite idea is three in one. Right. And it's 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 how he defines a human being. A human being is one and three. And it's also you hear a lot of the Holy Trinity stuff in there from ancient Christian East. And basically what he's trying to say is there's three types of cities. And one type is what he calls the cosmic city. Cosmos here being world. You can think of it as the world. The second kind is the city state. Which you can think of as a just a really big ass city or like a nation, you can do that. And the other type of city he says is the individual. So the individual is a city and each mirrors the other. And in each, you find all the same parts as you find in the other. So the world is like a city and the city is like a person and a person is like the world and a city. So th this is, this is like Jonathan Peugeot's idea of nested realities. Yes. Excellent. It's the Russian dolls. Yeah. Okay. And so I, follow, I get it. You got it. So then the, the individual is included as a community in this case. So he calls all three a community. So there's the community known as the world. This is Plato, the community known as the nation, the community known as the self, which is pretty cool because in the ancient, in the ancient world, in the Judeo Christian world in both places, God always referred to himself as they, or often referred to himself as they, should we do something? So again, God is even showing up with like different parts, but one unity. So, so as a kind of standard for our friend Plato, he gets into the notion of justice. And the reason he's talking about justice, I really want you to hear that as good. Remember, these Greek guys laying and eating grapes and stuff, they're always just after the good. You can always simplify it. The, what's good in love? What's good in play? What's good in nations? What's good? And so good and justice are closely tied together. So for, for Plato, what he wanted to figure out is how could a person, a city, state, a, a nation, or the world be good? All right? So here's what he writes. <clears throat> Justice is the same for each throughout. Each member of the community, well, that's weird. So each member of the world, each member of a city state, each member of a person should perform the task for which it is fitted by nature. In that way, the establishment of justice and of well-being depends on an answer to one question. Who shall rule? So let me say it again. And we'll, I'll just... I'll, I'll put in the word city. Each member of the city should perform the task for which he is fitted by nature. In that way, there's only one question left. If you're looking for justice and the good, 
who shall rule? And what's really cool is who shall rule the person? Wait a minute. Shouldn't I rule the per? Who's I? Oh, <laughs> wait. A person has to decide who shall rule within the own person? What? Yeah. So for Plato, a city is like a human and a human is like the world and all of these things have parts and all the parts go about their business and each must go about their business in a certain way as by their nature. So in this case, a hand must grab, right? Everything has its purpose. And within a human being, ha, huh, within a human being, everything must be properly ordered. So let's Quick start question. with the person you want to, what you got? Yeah. When uh, Plato is talking about uh, individual as community, is he saying that it, does he have some sort of idea that the body is inhabited by like different spirits, like mm -hmm. um, that were sort of made up of all these different parts and that's the community of the individual. Yeah. And he, yeah. when he's saying who shall rule, he's like, what part of you is going to dictate the answers? Is that sort of, am I getting that right? Yeah. That's where he's going. Okay. And okay. he's going to go body, mind, and soul. Now right. we got to figure okay. out these terms. We're not going to spend forever on them, but Basically, what he's going to say, which is not unlike what a lot of the early Christians said, but they kind of, they, the early Christians went with noose or noetic self. This was different for Plato. This was like super rational. For, for Plato, the mind here is really important. It's, it's the rational center. And so body, mind, and soul. So Plato thinks that a person needs to be ordered right. And to be ordered properly within is to put the mind or the reason as the ruler of the emotive or the feeling nature and as the ruler of the hungry parts or the passionate nature, the mind. If a person ordered their nature this way and lived according to this order, they would live the good life. And just the same, if a city ordered itself properly, then it too could live the good life. In this way, a city for Plato was a living, breathing being. <clears throat> it's like an organism, right? It's fulfilling a type of telos, a purpose. And what's the purpose? It's to provide the place in which the human being may live the good life. Oh, you know, like Toledo. <laughs> Isn't Toledo that? That's, that was at the top of my list. I was actually going to reference that. Uh, that's nice. Toledo or Ufa. Yeah. Ufa. Isn't that um, intense though? So these guys aren't playing around. Heavy things lightly. So is he setting the bar too high, right? I He's setting an ideal. Yeah, that's right. That's his job. That's what. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is anybody, gonna, is any community going to live up to it? Human, city, or, or world? Well, a utopian thinker is like, we'll get it to happen. Yes, bring it. We're going to get there, guys. Uh, no, I don't think that's going to happen. But you get the concept, right? So rationally is how the city has to organize itself. So listen to this quote. It's interesting. A person, right, as he calls it, subject to the ruling reason that exercises forethought on the behalf of the whole man that person is good. So a person who subjects his life, right, to the ruling reason, he exercises forethought on behalf of the whole man. For Plato, a city was a city then that lived in accordance with order and reason. And here's the really cool part. It's kind of cool. And he says that it means that people have to get on lockdown. And the reason I say that's cool is because we're all experiencing it. And this is what he means by lockdown. We all have to have the right job. We all have to be, if you don't like lockdown, we all have to be restricted in some way to a type of activity. Just like the mind should be restricted to using reason, you wouldn't want suddenly the belly to suddenly use reason. It would be out of whack. And each person in a city has to know properly what they're doing and act accordingly. Now, this is Plato. Lockdown. 
he's not a freedom guy. Here's what he no, said. Just, yeah, I was just Go about ahead. to say that. No, I was just about to say, like, this doesn't sound like it would jive well with a modern, mm, yeah, no. you know, libertarian or something. They're like, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, a lot of sort of, a lot of postmoderns don't like Plato at all, as you might imagine, and they kind of attribute his thinking, his way of thinking to Nazism. <laughs> at least when it comes to the Republic. Tough. I know, it's tough on Plato. Yeah. yeah. All right, continue. Go Old on. world dude. Here's what he says in the Republic. That's the book where he lays this out. If a person who is by nature a craftsman or some sort of businessman, if he be tempted and inflated by wealth or by his command of votes or by his own might, and if he tries to handle military affairs, or if a soldier, for example, tries to handle the affairs of a lawman, or if a person tries to handle all of these things at one time, and still they be a slave or some other worker person, well, then those people jack up your city, <laughs> unquote. That jack up part's mine. Oh, okay. I was going to say, was that direct? Was Wouldn't that... that be hot if he was that like- was primary source? He was like, they shall jack up the city. <laughs> Your city shall be jacked up. But really, though, Andrew, you got to stick in your, stay in your, what did they say? Stay in your lane, bro. Yeah. Right. But the question is, is it sort of seems like a circle to me because he's saying you need to know what it is you should be doing, but the city should also be helping you know what you should be doing. Mm-hmm even though you're the city. So like, where does it? Like- well, you're, you're that that's right. The citizen will inherit. This is why he said, it's really important that the city is thought of as an organism because the city will inherit the people in the city will inherit the culture of the previous generation. So they're going to know because they're going to inherit a certain idea of who they already are. So he's not big in terms of flux. He doesn't imagine that a human being will change himself much in this way he's a bit of a determinist when it comes to the republic it's not like the slave is going to suddenly turn himself into the philosopher king but God, by the way there is a philosopher king in this city who's sort of making sure everything runs right and that's him <laughs> ironically but so check this out for him if the city isn't working this way then it's not a city it's a jungle and then he says, for the human being, if he's not ordered right, he's not a human being, he's an animal. That seems instructive. The cool thing about the old world, you don't have to take it all. You take some of it, you leave some of it. But it's instructive for the new world, for us, who are constantly thinking we're reconstituting all the truth all the time. Like we're, we're reinventing everything when we, we don't really need to. A lot of this stuff already stands on its own, right? So... Plato's a ball buster, basically. What about Hinduism? Well, Ananda Kumar Swami, as we, as I'm having trouble saying his name, Kumas Kumara Swami. Thank you. Well, he lays out the Bhagavad Gita says similar things. In the Bhagavad Gita, it says he quotes, "Our powers are not our own, but they are delegated powers and ministries through which the royal power of God is exercised." So the powers of man are simply the names we call his, the divine acts. Everything is an extension of everything else. And so in the Bhagavad Gita, what's happening is, is you aren't really on your own. You're an extension of what the city is or what the nation is. And the nation is extended into you and you have to participate properly in the city. So this kind of idea, right, where you can see that the earliest Christian communities, they have a similar idea, is that the life you live is the life of Christ in you. In other words, God is extended into you and you extend out. For Plato, there's something similar, right? Is the city, for it to operate properly, you have to extend yourself into it and it extends into you and you participate in it, right? You're not separate from it. It is a part of you. 
now Plato's God is reason. The divine is not for him an entity in that way. So this is sort of how people understand stuff. And it gets really intense. If you think about the Theotokos, right? Mary, the Virgin Mary. If you think about the Virgin Mary, she takes God inside of her. What? So she's the mother of God. God is in her, but not her. Just like a baby is in her, but not her, but kind of her. But in this case, it's God. So God is a part of you, and you're a part of God. And so everything you do is an extension. And so if we see the city this way, it gets pretty trippy. What do you think about that? That's, that's, am I getting that? Is it making sense? It's hot. It's also really confusing. Uh, quick, quick backtrack just for listeners who don't know. What is the Bhagavad Gita? Oh, good. The Bhagavad Gita is a holy book. It's one of the later holy books in Hinduism. Hinduism is sort of the ancient. It's a it's it's a whole collection of of holy writings called the Sutra, and they're all collected from all the ancient Hindu priests and philosophers, and every, handed down one after the other of what we know today is like the Indian people. So anyway, so what's a city? Well, I think we could still call it a place where lots of people get a job. But if you think about what we're talking about today, it seems like, it seems like there's some sort of ray of light that's coming from some continuous source. And that ray of light is something like people, something like Logoi. And that ray of light is being stretched in some sort of eternal personhood. And it's going into the world. And it's got a certain syntonia or intensity to it. And that syntonia has something in it like the power to do justice. And that justice looks like the place where we live. And that place where we live is what Plato wants to call a city. So it's like God in us extends out from us and creates our day-to-day -day behavior in a city, a polis. Now, here's the cool thing. It, don't think population, because I know people listening to this are thinking like, like New Toledo, but it's really anywhere where you see a collection of people extending one into the other. Right, that's the best way to think of it. But for Plato, he he lays it all out and goes really deep into it, and eventually says this is what a polis should look like, a political city. Right. So, I think I'm trying to say that a city is a place and a purpose at the same time. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Like, no. No, no, it does. It does. But the purpose is. The city can't provide its own purpose. I think is what right. you're also what he, what Plato's saying, right? right? It's like it's it's being created, but it's also creating at the same time. Yeah, there's this. Um, mm -hmm. It's sort of paradoxical how mm -hmm. it's functioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it. There's an old saying: if you're close to paradox, you get close to truth. The problem is, as you get closer to truth, it will become more and more paradoxical. In other words, you have to submit your reason or really shed it at some level before you can actually fully understand. But for us, we're not caught in that because we haven't been taught to think that way or think is maybe not the right word. We haven't been taught to live that way. We don't imagine, and it's not imagine like make up. We don't see in the other, right? our participation and that's pretty weird in some ways if you think about this andrew in some ways that's far more logical than the modern industrial project which makes everybody a constituent part it makes much more sense that i'm integrated than i that that i am in some ways an outcome of you like this whole conversation right now is we're interpenetrating me and you. We're, we're, we're together. 
what I'm trying to say would be very different if I wasn't saying it to you. Right. I think yeah. I can say this independent of you. But watch this. I can't say this independent of you. It's not possible for those sounds to have been independent of you. Now, mm -hmm. it, it might have been something else I say. I could possibly say this a different way, but that moment is only possible with you because you are here. You are making, you are, you are <laughs> relating to me. And what Kumaswar is trying to say, and what all of these old thinkers are trying to say is, is only the fool understands themselves as independent. Mm -hmm. That's the Greek word. That one of the words for fool or is idiote, the idiot. I would say one of the words for the individual is idiot. You to be an individual in your mind is to be an idiot. That's the Greek. So basically, Plato is saying since we, since we all don't want to be idiots, we don't don't want to be alone. In fact, we can't be alone. We better get this whole city thing right because it's that, really important. <laughs> right, be, because if we don't understand that we're a part of what we're creating like actually my check this out my constitution if i'm not putting the proper things in order in myself then my city will appear the same way right and if the city i live in hasn't properly ordered itself as an organism then it will jumble me up Right. Ah. This is this is this is this is uh Jordan Peterson. Maybe like his most classic Jordan Peterson ism is go clean your bedroom because the outer also determines the inner and and vice versa, obviously. It they they interpenetrate, like what you were saying. So what if that's true? Which you know, all of us in the West, we're like, oh, that's so neat. Uh, there's like a whole kind of internet thing right now to like, it's so mystical, but I still think we're in our head because I don't actually, you, I don't think you and I actually show up at Walmart and imagine that I am interpenetrating with the Walmart lady in the checkout line. <laughs> yeah, no. no, I am in a moment of exchange. I am. I am simply doing something transactional. Right. It's purely commercial. Yeah. But what if it wasn't tomorrow for you? Uh, then I have a serious problem with 90% of city planners. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, now you're going to get really into something interesting. City planners isn't even a thing. Right, Plato was a city planner, but you notice he wasn't talking about roads. What are our city planners? They're engineers. Isn't that funny? Our it's city planners depressing. should be philosophers. <laughs> our city planners should be philosophers and whatever, priests or whatever people do in the spiritual world. Because, you know, Plato's not building anything. Plato doesn't take out like a, you know, like a spreadsheet and then do like a blueprint. It's not how it right, works. Right, right. Now, hold on, because he could be wrong, right? I hear Uncle Seth like, well, he's just wrong yeah listen this is super interesting there's a city being built in saudi arabia right now i think you might know about this city i forget the exact name noem no noem i think it's called and it's yeah. built on a line and now without trying to explain this too much but it's built as a straight line through the desert it has three layers the top layer is where everyone walks no one no one drives it's, I don't know, is it 23 miles out into the desert? And it's just, I forget how, is it three miles wide? A mile and a half? I can't, I no. don't know. It's, it's like yeah. a mile wide, right? Not even. It's and not so very wide. Yeah. It's not wide at all. And basically on the top level of the city that's being designed by the, the Saudi Arabians with all their engineers, there's only walking living space. There's just people being people, no cars. Then the second layer is all the the machine the transportation machinery. It's how you get around. It's subways and air conditioning docks and everything. And then at the bottom, I forget what's at the very bottom, but the very bottom is the the machinery. Uh, what is it? 
I think, no, I think, no, I think it's stores. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah. It's living space or, or public space stores. And then on the bottom is ma the machinery of moving around. Mm -hmm. Now people can look this up. We'll put it in the pod notes. What am I bringing this up for? Because what they're trying to do is re-envision, right? But they're using the same modernistic, the same scientific principles. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe they're moving towards something new. And maybe we all are. That is trying to take into account the human community. And here I mean the individual. There is a mm -hmm. shift. This is why I tell everybody to calm down. Who like, oh my gosh, we're losing our culture. Well, there is a shift that may be actually trying to account for true humanity. Maybe. Plato was trying to account for it, right? 2,500 years ago. That's all we're ever trying to do. So the city, there it is. No? Fascinating. No, I think it's fascinating. Uh, you know, I guess living... Uh, uh, from my perspective over the last year living in Russia and seeing how cities are built here uh, versus let's say like the old uh, villages. Yeah. It is, I mean, there's a, there's a reason that like the winter depression in Russia is like so high. And I would mm -hmm. say there's a reason alcoholism is high because the, the cities are not, they're not beautiful. They just aren't. Um, at least the, I would say, I, I, I don't, I might get some hate for this, but, uh, Ufa is not a pretty city and not you really can feel it. You, you, you sense it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very monochromatic. It's very same it, and it doesn't feel as if the city exists like you're saying in order that I might find my correct role and then perform yeah. that role. Like there's. It's like, not inviting you to some telos, some purpose. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's, at least, at least I don't, I don't see it. You know, it's not evident to me. And these are mostly communist. These are, these are communist structures probably. Yeah. Cause it's, it's a hundred years now. Yeah, yeah. Like the the apartment building we live in was, I think, built in the eighties, nineties. Yeah, like that. so that's that's yeah. instructive. That's helpful because you're experiencing something we're not back here. You're seeing different types of architecture. That's interesting. Yeah, and a true architect, right, is an artist. They're considering all this, mm -hmm. and so it's not like it's lost. But I just love that old world stuff. Now, you could be that Plato was just wrong. You know. Oh, of course. Yeah. Maybe those cities were really ugly and he, maybe his vision is just really ugly for the person and for the city and all that. Um, but who cares? I, that's not our business on this pod. Our business is to give you the old world and heavy things lightly. This is Watar. Gagimarjos. That means to you the victory that's said at the KP table, also known as the Supra in the Georgian Republic. We do have some cool news coming up about a location in Appalachia that we are going to open up that is a restaurant collecting, what do we call it, a, a lounge of, of wonderfulness, a, a <laughs> KP cafe of joy, a First Things Foundation headquarters, but what it really is is a place to come sit down, read, talk, do the super, eat good food, and we're going to open it in 2021. We'll have more on that. Watar is produced by Andrew Schwark, Daniel Paternos, with a little sprinkling of Riley Doris. All First Things Foundation folks. This is our nonprofit. We work hard, right? We work hard by giving two years of our lives, and we go out and live long term in some of the world's toughest neighborhoods. And we do that in order to immerse and create momentum for local change makers and their vision of a better life or a beautiful life, whatever it may be. Share Watar with your friends. Hit us up with a solid review on iTunes and everywhere you get your podcast. Your love for us helps us to love and serve others. Say it, Andrew, in Russian. How do you say Paka, paka. Paka, paka. Das Das Hasta luego. Kambufo. Peace out. Au revoir. Much love.